Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Audio Nautica. Some time ago I was kindly given these uh, Symef Type S 220 watt class AB amplifier boards by Harrison at Modular Design Systems. So thank you again Harrison for sending these to me. This is one channel obviously, so we've got the amplifier board here and here we have got the relay protection board. So I've got a, a set of these for stereo and so it's taken me a while to get to these. Uh, part of that was sort of various other projects but also planning what I wanted to do. So I've now got an enclosure has finally turned up. Um, I worked out what I wanted. I ended up ordering the, ordering the Dissipante enclosure. So the enclosure can be purchased from um, DIY Audio Shop and um, but it comes from Modu Shop in Italy. Now I believe you can order directly from uh, Modu Shop, or they're also known as Hi-Fi 2000. But I ordered it through um, DIY Audio Shop. The reason being, there's a few extra options that will make my life easier uh, getting it from DIY Audio Shop. So I'm going to put this enclosure together now, just to show you what the the overall layout and plan is that I'm looking at for this uh, amplifier and as I do that I'll explain uh, some of the, the design decisions and factors in, in why I think this is going to be best for me and why I've gone this way. Okay so firstly these are the directions that come with this. Um, yeah that's all there is, an exploded drawing which you can work it out from this. The thing that's a bit confusing is that you get a lot more um, nuts and screws than you actually need and I think that's to do with uh, build options and and so on. So um, this here is the front panel. There are front panel options. You can get a black front, front panel as well. I ordered the option that has got these holes drilled in and I don't think I'm going to need most of them. Probably the only thing I'm going to have in the front panel, I think I'll have a a pilot light slap bang in the middle but also these um, mounting holes here um, are designed to line up with the base which you'll see later on which makes it easier for putting you know, mounting things inside the unit so I thought just for the little bit of extra cost I'd get this and if I ended up not using it then so what. So I'm just going to put the front panel aside for a moment. Um, basically this thing is built around these four brackets and um, I'm going to put these screws in first. These are actually for the optional base and um, I'm putting in some star washers, some shape proof washers. It doesn't come with any star washers and I just think it's probably a really good idea to actually have them. So I'm going to put these in. Okay, so now we attach these to these heat sinks. And again, I've put some star washers on these because they didn't come with any star washers. And I just really think that having a little bit of vibration protection just to stop things from shaking loose is a good idea. Okay, so that's those brackets attached. So that's the gonna form the frame. 
So if I return back now to the front panel, so it's got all these, it's symmetrical this way, but it's got, it's not symmetrical that way. I'm not sure which is supposed to be the top and the bottom. Okay, so now I can attach these heat sinks to the front panel like so. And the trick is, is not to tighten everything up at this point because if I do, the rear panel will not fit. Right, so we just leave these more or less loose for now. Because now we've got to put the back panel on. Yeah, so this is a um, rear panel option, is to be able to get the rear panel with, um, with these holes in it which is something that I really need. So it'll be these black screws, because this is a black panel, and so these will go in here. Yeah, so this rear panel with these cutouts, you can get this um, optional kit, which has got this um, IEC connector which just drops in here like so and um, a bag of parts which I don't think I'm going to use most of those but some um, banana plugs to go in there and there's also some um, high quality Nutric um, RCAs which they just sort of drop in there. So this means that I don't have to mill any holes in the back panel because I don't have the capability or the gear to do that but end up with everything I need going out. Okay, so that's the enclosure more or less assembled. Now, one of the other optional parts that is available for order is this. So this is a base plate. So I put those studs onto the brackets before I began. So what I can actually do is I can just drop this base plate straight onto those studs. Yeah, so these studs line up with this base plate and so uh, I'm just gonna whack some screws in it for now. It'll have to come out later on, but basically the idea is, is to mount all the whatnots to this base plate. And um, that means don't have to mount anything to the bottom enclosure or the bottom panel, which we don't want to do. So that's how that goes. Now, speaking of top and bottom lids, those are here, so that just goes there. I'm hoping it will actually line up. It looks like it might need a little bit of tweaking, but anyway, um, that can all be sorted out later on. But 
yeah, there's just four screws that hold that on there. There are machine inserts, M3 machine inserts, so that's quite nice. And I'm presuming that that's probably what these ones here are for. Because um, there's a bunch of these of Allen key heads. There are some other screws that did not get used, like these ones haven't been used. These ones haven't been used. I'm not sure what they are. They might depend on what options you ordered. Um, I do understand the fixings change with some of the mounting options. So that's those. Um, I've got these little riser panels, so they will screw almost a bit like Meccano. They'll line up with the holes in this bottom panel and it'll mount, line up with these holes in the front panel also. So that could mount there or it could mount there and then another one over here or there. So that's what those are for. Um, my idea is to probably mount the protection boards to that. So anyway, you might be asking why did I go with this particular um, option and also this thing is so huge compared to those circuit boards. Well, I was originally looking at the Deluxe case um, and this is very similar to the Deluxe case but this is the Dissipante. The Deluxe, again you get the, this is actually the Deluxe back which is why I was steering down the Deluxe path and you don't realise until you, I actually spoke with one of their engineers who said well you can actually use the Deluxe back on the Dissipante. The reason I went with the Dissipante is because the Deluxe, the heat sinks come pre-drilled. There is not an option to get the heat sinks without holes in them. And they're pre-drilled according to a standard drill pattern for DIY audio that won't fit um, these circuit boards. So what my idea is, is that if I mounted these like this, then there's not really enough room to mount the way I want to, to mount toroidals and so on. And my idea actually is to go, I want to go for a, a dual monoblock design, kind of like some of the Accuphase um, power amps were and so on. So my intention is, is to have completely separate power supplies for each channel. The only thing that will be common will basically be the mains input. And so then have a toroidal there and a toroidal there, a rectifiers for each and then a bunch of capacitors probably here. So there will have to be at least um, four capacitors, a positive and a negative rail for each channel. So that's two times two is four. So I already did the dimensions for the toroidals that I want to use and it just won't fit. So the reason I went with this 5U enclosure is because I'm going to mount these boards like this. So I'm going to mount them horizontally. I'll switch these components around so they're coming out the bottom folded under and they'll be mounted onto the heatsink here. So I'll need to drill and tap the heatsink to allow me to mount those and mount the circuit board there. And that will then give me a heap of room. I mean, you can see, you know, where the board ends. I have all of this room. I do need to mount the, as I mentioned, the protection boards. Um, but yeah, so that's the general idea. Um, so that's where I'm at. So I've actually designed like a, a drilling template which I intend to order with um, PCBWay. So the drilling template will allow me to precisely drill into the heatsink for when I do my tapping. Because I really only get one chance at this, um, blow it, and I somehow need to get a, a new heatsink, and theoretically they don't sell the heatsinks individually. So anyway, just wanted to give you guys an update as to where I'm at with this project. Um, thank you so much for watching my video. Please do subscribe to my channel. It helps me so much, especially in this multi-part video. There'll be other parts as I progress with this build. So subscribe so that you'll get notifications as to when another video comes out. Do like and share. Leave a comment. Uh, you can support me on Patreon. And you could also check out my other channel, Watch Out, which is about watchmaking. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you again on the next video and bye for now.